All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're here for another episode of Making Monsters, and this is one that a lot of people have been screaming about. Our guy, Jalen Johnson, just been going ham this season, and he's been really, really fun to watch. I, I personally have been a fan of Jalen for a while and have been shouting the pay Jalen like a lot of other bands, uh, a lot of other Bears fans have, but we're now getting to this year where it's almost, you can't even argue anymore that he deserves another contract and he deserve he's one of the better cornerbacks, if not one of the best cornerbacks in the league right now. Uh, they just actually uh, posted some of the fan rankings of votes for the Pro Bowl this year. And Jalen is voted the second cornerback in the league right now. Uh, when it comes to Pro Bowl votes, and obviously that's that's fans voting. Uh, that's one third of the vote when it comes to other things. So that's announced tonight at 8 p.m. We'll see that. Um, I personally think he deserves to be in, but we'll get to that in a little bit. We're joined by his brother Johnny Johnny Johnson, also former cornerback. He played uh, UCLA and Fresno, correct, Johnny? I did. Okay. All yeah, right. So. Um, you are the older brother of Jalen Johnson. Jalen is, uh, you guys are from Fresno, California. Uh, he went to Central High. Did you both go to Central High? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so both Central High graduates. Uh, he went on, obviously, to play at Utah. You played at UCLA and Fresno State, uh, which your dad also did. Um, oh, so thanks so much. On this. your homework. You've been I know. Here. Reading up, reading up a little bit. I like it. I like it. Thanks so much for hopping on with me, though, Johnny. I really appreciate no it. Problem. Uh, let's start from the beginning then, because everybody has their different stories of how football came into their lives. And obviously having a dad that played college football and was a corner, I'm sure that kind of steered some of the some of the decisions you guys made. But tell us a little bit about the beginning. When did both of you guys get on the football field? And was it kind of like dad said you're playing football or did you guys just right. thoroughly enjoy it and want to get out there? Got you. Um, well, before we start, I do want to speak on um that i have a better um had it all my life um um i don't want to try to hide it obviously you may hear it and so i have been been trying to, to to take the next step and being open about it being upfront about it being honest about it um it always hasn't been that way sometimes i can be very shy and apprehensive to do things like this do interviews and have my face on the camera and things like that but i've been um i'm owning it um it's who i am at the end of the day it's what m makes me me so i just want to put that out there um that all of us have have our own issues our own things we struggle and fight, fight through every day and i will encourage you and all of the other um audience out there to con um to, to, to continue to fight and to overcome whatever obstacles no matter how small or big you no matter how small or big they are, and don't let them find you. Um, but now to answer you, it was honestly a mixture of each. Um, I know my dad said, without a doubt, he's he's always been up front about it. You guys are playing football, and you're playing corner or your safety. On offense, you guys can play <laughs> lineman, receiver, running back, yeah. I don't care. But on the other side of the ball, you're playing corner or safety. So we didn't have a choice when we first yeah. started, but we did end up having some fun in it and and um, owned it. Yeah. Um, so along with football, we also were doing other things else. Um, so uh, how about I say softball, soccer, baseball. Basketball, um, all of the above. <clears throat> well, that's cool. And Johnny, thanks for sharing your story too, because I think that is important. And I, I think it's a big part of why I started this podcast too in the first place is making monsters. We see athletes, we see these guys playing football, and we see you guys, you know, back in college playing football. And sometimes you don't know the stories behind it and the other things right. that people are fighting through and trying to <laughs> learn confidence in. So I really appreciate you sharing that and still joining me. Um, because I know for a lot of people that that's definitely a difficult thing. But I, when you talk about football players when they start, and a lot of them do play multiple sports, because I think that it's their one in one sense kind of their way of finding what they want to do. But in another sense, it's you know you're you're getting to know uh, the level of how you can compete and how you can start to learn to game plan around each other. Because obviously some 
sports are a little more team centric and some sports are a little more about you. Um, and football is definitely a big team sport. And I think that's something that when you, one of the things that really shines for a lot of football players who pick football are the ones who can really feed off of energy of other people and like to work in that competitive, but you're relying on some other people and a lot of things. So when you go back to the start uh, for you and for Jalen, because obviously this is about um, kind of Jalen's story through everything, but you mentioned DB position. Your dad said, if you guys are on the defense, you're going to play a defensive back <laughs> position, which I think, and I've heard is one of the more difficult positions to learn. And especially as you go up each level. So I'll be interested to hear about that and how, you know, how you even took it from high school to uh, into college into USC, right. UCLA and Fresno. But when you're talking about Jalen um, and you're talking about his high school career, I believe he was on varsity junior and senior year. I'm not sure about yeah. the sophomore year. Uh, what, what was it when you were watching your brother? Because you're four years older than him. So you were, I know, off at college at this time and not sure how much you got to see him. But when you were watching him kind of progress through high school, how soon were you like, okay, th this kid can be pretty good and go on to play this at, at a higher level? Um, the crazy story is actually when he first began high school, I wholeheartedly believed he wanted to play basketball at the time he was on a aau team and he was traveling honestly everywhere around the country nevada chicago new york kentucky louisiana like he was he was going everywhere um and having some success at it and i always used to always used to throw a little, little underhand <laughs> I have at him saying, bro, you're trying to go, go to Arizona. And I say <laughs> Arizona because at the time, this was maybe, uh, let me see, let me see, maybe like 20, 2013, 2014, Arizona was ranked high in basketball. And they were also ranked in football. And so I said, bro, you're trying to go to Arizona and be the two-sport two, two athlete, <laughs> all kind of things like that. And he used to always give me, no, I'm not, bro. No, I'm not. And so, so honestly, when did I know he would become who he is in football? It happened a little bit later. I want to say the, the summertime going into his senior year. Um is when, and I don't want to say he was a late bloomer, but he, he I would say he, he went, I'm all in. Uh -huh. So he stopped playing basketball when he was a sophomore. And then that, that um, early that spring into that summer, it was all football coming back as a junior after that season it was also all football so okay. again that's when he was really able to excel i say yeah. he was always a heck of an athlete hence why i said he can go, 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 go to errors yeah. on the the, 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 on the, 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 the dual offer, um, but he finally did put, put all of his eggs into into the f football and being who he ultimately I think who who he is now at the end of the day. And so it was go going into his senior year. Sometimes at um, the Nike Open camp, he tested off the charts. Had a heck of a day, two interceptions, no passes were caught. Um, then he would also earn an invite that day actually to go to the, the the opening, which is in Oregon. I don't think they do that now. I'm not sure, but I know back then. So he was he was always able to excel at the camps, at events, at seven on seven and his, his name got hotter and hotter and hotter. And so as I'm saying it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, obviously he's big, he's tall, he's strong, he's fast, but being able to actually analyze the game is like, nah, he, he actually knows what he's doing. And having me there, I was 
helping them out. I'm not hating on them and not trying to show them the not trying to show them the game. So yeah. through all of that, through all of the training that we were doing in the off season, um, I was able to see the training actually pay, pay, pay off. And so seeing the training pay off, seeing seeing everything starting to add up, it's like okay, like he he legit has a shot. And then, as I said, go, go going into his senior year, after all the things he did that junior season, um, off season from, want to say about February to August, just seeing him rep after rep, improve, improve, improve. It's like, uh, he, oh, here we go. He, yeah, like he's heading in the right direction. <laughs> So when, when you're, cause a lot of things too, we talked about multi-sports that happens right. a lot, but multi-position obviously is a big thing in high school too, because coaches are kind of figuring out where players play their best. Players are figuring out where they like to be the best. Obviously your rosters aren't as huge too. So a lot of times you'll see, you know, running backs also be the cornerback or vice right. versa. Absolutely. I've had other people on making monsters who played six different positions in high school and were able to kind of they were kicking the ball and punting the ball and running the ball and doing all of these things so when Jalen was in playing in high school was he mainly still in that defensive back or was he kind of playing both sides of the ball he was doing each side he was doing some, some um corner and receiver and that's where we're seeing these catches now from that receiving yeah. ability <laughs> Although he has a few that went through his hands, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. So if you can name, because now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, now part of what you do, you're do, you doing is training defensive backs specifically, or are you training just football players? What is? Because I know I've seen some stuff on your Instagram about that. Um, I train all athletes um, from ages five and up. Um, okay. Five, specialty though is for training the defensive backs um that's where i know the most info that's yeah the, 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 that's where i'm at home i can do the strength and the speed and all that stuff which i to do with my brother but when it comes down to the defensive back stuff and the ins and outs of that I don't think there's anybody that you, you, you'll you find who's who's better at that. Well, and that's what that's, uh, that's kind of leading to my next my next question, because you said you saw this jump and there was that point between the junior and senior year where you're like, OK, like this kid, he's going to be good. He's good now, but the potential to just keep getting better. What was it? Because there's so many things and you talk about the speed of defensive backs. You can talk about the hands. You can talk about the vision. You can talk about all of these different things that they're really good at. What did you see between that time where that Jalen improved on the most between that junior senior year? And eventually, I guess, what led him to getting uh, recruited so much, too? Right. What do I think it was? I would say him being able to understand the game and think the game. Okay. Um, is huge. Um, I'm I'm a big big, 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 big advocate. Yes, you can have super good footwork. You can can be fast. You can have all those things. But if you don't know what's go 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 going on out there, it's hard to be successful unless uh -huh. you're just one of the super super athletic guys on the field. But you can see it all the time on Sundays. Yeah. Everybody who who makes who plays, everybody who's been in the NFL for X amount of time is not always the strongest, not always the fastest, not always who was the first overall pick in the draft, not always the highest recruited athlete. But somehow, some way, you you can find a you can say like he always finds a way to be be at the football. He's always in the right spot. He always mm -hmm. makes a hard catch. Yeah. And so it's just something about having it here that he does and i mean honestly i can't i i i don't take credit for that that that's all him he, he's just being able to um implement things because it's easy to it's easy to, to know what to do when you're in the film room when you're in practice but to be able to take that knowing what to do and, and being able to execute that in the games 
is ultimately what it's all about. So his ability to be able to think the game is what separates him from other guys, and that's mm-hmm. what what I see um, in that um, in, in that time from the junior season to to, to the senior. Yeah, and I think honestly, Johnny, that's something we're even seeing now. The from his rookie season to now, I like I said, I've always been a fan of Jalen. I think he's impressed me from the start. But you see growth, you see growth in him, and I think a lot of that is you just he sees the field now, and you feel like every he knows where everyone's supposed to be at all times. He knows yeah. where the where the ball is going to be, and that's just such, such an important thing. And not every defensive back in the league has that. There's ones that are like you said, really athletic. Um, but maybe don't have that next level just because they point, can't quite understand the game as the whole yeah. um, as a whole the other time, or maybe in di- different defensive schemes, it's not just working for them. What about the competitive factor between you two? Because I know you're four years apart, but you were both playing football, and I know growing up, sibling rivalry can be a little fun. Sometimes it turns into some fighting and jealousy, and sometimes right. it turns into just making each other better. How would you describe your relationships growing up? Um, ex- Exactly how you said, super competitive at all, um, at all, at all ages, all factors. Whether we're playing angle <laughs> tackling in the house when we're not supposed to be, then we're having, <laughs> then we're getting in trouble by my mom. Then the stuff falls off the countertop. Then we're getting, <laughs> then we're having our ass whooped by dad. All kind of stuff like that. So. <laughs> all that i mean it's always been fun and i mean it still hasn't changed to this day um obviously it's not um angle hitting it anymore i'm not doing that (laughs) but it's just even things as things as small as who can shoot who who who, who can shoot an empty garbage bottle into i mean an empty water bottle into to the garbage okay bro well i can shoot it from over over the counter i can shoot it from way over here back behind the couch it's just things like that at all times that honestly that makes us who we are and that makes him who he is so i mean the competitive nature has always been there um i know for me i was always i was always trying to set the the bar high and i really wouldn't even say set the bar high for him i was trying to that set the bar high for me, quite honestly, and just address the things I was after and always trying to be the best. Um, and so he came up trying to beat me. And, and I mean, I always said, if he can hang with me, he'll be able to hang with anybody just because I know what type of, I would say, attitude I had. Um, yeah. I'm not I'm not super big. I'm not super strong. I'm not fast. But is it a certain attitude that we were instilled with by um, each of our parents, my mom and my dad, as and it was just to not be de- 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 denied. You can do anything you set your attitude to, and and we were always honestly held to to, to a high standard. We had to have A's and B's. Uh-huh. You had to make to make to, 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 to touchdowns. Um, so it was always the expectation at the end of the day. Um, the, the, there was this t- time when a friend, a t- 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 teammate of of mine, made a joke to my dad after I s- 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 scored like five t- touchdowns in the game. He looked over at my dad and said, hey, man, it's, it's okay to, 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 to be happy <laughs> that, 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 that your son is having success. Yeah, And, and I did just use that example because – it was always taught to us to expect that. That's why yeah. we do all the extra work. That's why we run laps after practice. That's why you lift weights. That's why we do the yeah. extra footwork. So the way it was taught to us by my dad is I'm not surprised that you're making five touchdowns. I'm not yeah. surprised because I know the work we do. So having that upbringing in, in the sense is good, but in the sense is bad <laughs> because you, you don't never know when to feel happy because yeah. you're like, okay, I'm so, 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 so supposed to have interception. I'm supposed yeah. to not let this guy catch the ball. So it's a lot. Now, obviously, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but yeah. sometimes it's easy to 
have that not not just a lot attitude, even when you're able to accomplish some very huge things, only because like I always expected this. Like I'm not um, in shock, or like I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, and that's what it's interesting because it, it reminds me of the story that I always read about with uh, Walter Payton, actually, and with his son. Um, his son, Jared Payton, always tells the story of when he was playing football and it was one game and he scored a touchdown and like went crazy and like spiked the ball and was celebrating. Walter Payton was like, no, like we don't do that. You uh, you did your job. Good job. Right. Like, you got a touchdown, but that's what you're supposed to do. And if Absolutely. you go back and watch Walter Payton film, he's never that guy to be super elaborate. He'll, he'd usually walk the ball right back to the ref and right. say here because that's the kind of mentality. So I see your dad has some Walter Payton in, in him, right. it seems like. <laughs> and, yeah, and like yeah, you said, yeah. it is. I want there, There's moments where I'm like, I totally agree. I get it because you're on the football field and uh, it's a game you love playing and it's a business and it's at mm. your job. It's all of these things wrapped in one. But I do hope that you and your brother know like how incredible it is to be able to be successful at the college level and be successful at the next level, because it's really not easy to do. Um, when you're talking about the recruiting process for Jalen, uh, Johnny, because there's a lot of schools going after him. You mentioned Arizona, obviously he was trying to get both of those sports in uh, Arizona, um, but Oklahoma, Florida, Nebraska, Michigan, obviously Utah, all of those schools had offered uh, scholarships and playing scholarships to Jalen when the recruiting process was going on. What do you think factored into him choosing Utah? Do you know what that reasoning was? Um, That reasoning, I know a lot of, I won't say a lot of, but I know the experience that I, that I had. In uh Oh, Hold on, I can't hear you. What? I'm not gonna... oh, sorry. NFL, if you're not on the field. So first come first, wherever you go, you have to make sure from the time you step on the campus, you'll be able to, to lay. And it wasn't one of those things where we're trying to shy away from um, from competition because that's not the case, but you want to go somewhere where you have room to make errors. Yeah. Um, where if you have an ankle injury, you're out for two games. They're not bringing in another five star who was also the number one guy, and then if he makes a pick, now I'm back healthy. Yeah. Or, I don't have a job. I don't have a job. <laughs> yeah. So it's not about, okay, oh, well, he's afraid to, 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 to compete. No, I'm not afraid to compete. But I also don't want to be in a position where I don't have any um, air room. Yeah. Well, and, and I think you also want to be seen. And we're seeing now in college football with how easily – I don't know. Hold on. Johnny, hold on. Sorry. It's making, I can't hear you right now. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. There it is. I can hear you again. Sorry. It just hooked up to. The, the, yeah. The I think it hooked to Wi Fi or something. I was like, I hear something, yeah. but it's not you. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, um, a huge note from. My dad, that he he told me and my brothers at the end of the other day, said you have to go where it fits you because I'm not there, your sister's not there, your brother's not there. There's nobody there. So when the couple yeah. where you're hopping up at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, you're training. That he, he you as an individual have to to be, be able to look in the mirror and say that I made the choice to come here, not, oh, well, I don't like this school, and my mom told me to come here, my brother told me to come here, and now I'm unhappy. Um, and so it was about somewhere where he felt at home, where he would be happy, um, somewhere where he can be on the field early. And then the th third thing, and I'm not exactly sure, there may be one other thing, but that would help him be able to earn his degree in two and a half seasons, and he'll be able to enter the league after his his after his his um 
third yeah, yeah. which that makes sense and and that's what i was mentioning when the sound kind of went haywire for a minute i was just talking how different i feel like college football is getting now there guys have to address this a little differently just because of the way the transfer portal is now because of the way with nil now like there's all of these extra things going on in college football and i think it really is starting to affect people's decisions a little bit um but there are it's kind of to me i've seen guys want to take kind of a path that jalen's done where they he wants to go somewhere where he knows he's going to get seen he's know he's going to get playing time and he knows he'll be able to um still play against decent competition it's not like utah was playing not playing anybody because they do. Um, But I I think that other people think that going to that big SEC school and uh, that may be their opportunity to get to the next level. They just need the chance. So there's definitely different ways to go about it. And I don't think either way is wrong. Um, Whatever, like you said, your dad said, whatever you feel is right for you personally, everybody's personal choices are different. Um, Johnny, talking about his senior season, I don't want to keep you too long. We're already at 25 minutes, but oh, I am um, <laughs> talking about his senior season because I they went 11 and two that year. His senior season, I believe it was they went to the finals. They were in the state championships during that year. Um, do you remember that time at all? Did you get to watch Jalen during the, that kind of playoff run? Um, I went to the last game, which I want to say is the game he um, he committed. That okay. was the game I went to. But other than that, I don't remember being in any of the games. And, I mean, i seen all of the high, 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 high like that. But I wasn't able to make a lot, 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 lot of his games. <clears throat> Well, yeah, you were, had your own life going on at that time when we were in college. Um, so let's skip over to Utah. He commits to Utah, uh, His, I think right before his senior year, during his senior year. Um, his time at Utah was pretty consistent. His freshman year, I think, only started a couple games. But those next two years, he was a starter. He was out on the field. It was constantly setting some sort of records when it comes to, like, Pac-12 football. And he was – eighth and when it comes to i want to say let me just read this real quick so i don't mess it up because um he oh let's see has four interceptions that next season his sophomore season uh which was third in pack 12 and eighth in the nation he had he was eighth in the nation with 126 interception return yards a lot of that having to do with obviously we mentioned some of the things he's really good at when it comes to speed and stuff but also his vision of the playing field uh, but he really upped his play during that year and you could that's when i think a lot of people you started seeing the tape of this kid and you're like okay he could play in the nfl and that was around the time when people i think started kind of noticing that do you going back and watching some of his when you watched his games at utah whether it was live or going back and seeing now was there a moment during that season where you were confident that he would be able to play nfl football um honestly i knew he could play in nfl football in high school it was just just a matter of how high he's picked and then Uh um because obviously injuries are a huge factor yeah Um, but again going back to and and i remember I remember him preparing for college and training um, um, us who were actually training together because his freshman season when he was training that summer, that spring, um, I had moved back home because that's when I had transferred to um, to resident no state. So as we're as we're training and doing all our things that we do, he was constantly asking, man, like, how is he? What kind of things do I need to be prepared for? And I always told him, like, man, honestly, bro, that it's not, not as hard as you think. Like, you're, <laughs> you're, like, you're very prepared. Yeah. That you won't have an issue. It just, just like he was always, man, are you sure? Like, nah, bro, like, I don't think you're being honest with me. The artist, <laughs> like, he was on, like, he was on me, like, man, no, like, help me. I'm like, bro, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping you. Like I know that you'll be fine, man. Aww. And so, and so he he was. And the reason I say that he'll be fine is because because he always had the the attitude of is uh, of being able to f- figure it out. Um, yeah. He, he was able to think the game, and to, to to go back to what you were saying earlier in the upbringing, he's um super super competitive um so 
you combine all those factors, whatever he may not know to start, he'll figure it out at the end of the day. And as we see um, in high college, I mean, honestly, all throughout high school, it may, I wouldn't say a a low start, but he started picking it up. Yeah. His junior year, senior year, same thing in college. Okay. His freshman year was solid. Sophomore year, okay. Like, who is this kid? Then his junior year, huge year. We start off in the NFL as a rookie. I think he led all all rookies and PBUs. Honestly, mm-hmm. that had a heck, heck of a start. Um, if you ask me, maybe <laughs> I'm a little biased, but hey, <laughs> he had a heck of a start in the NFL, but just in, from his first season to the second season to the third season to fourth, fourth, fourth season, the game mm-hmm. is starting to so, 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 slow down and it's become easier um yeah. so i just accredited that to his 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 ability to um to think the game his ability to do what it takes to become that elite athlete yeah and i think for him too a lot of it is just like you mentioned his ability to just learn and truly process the information that he's being coached yeah. and Uh, because some people that's harder for some people to really take in it's one thing to listen to the coaches one thing to you know go through the drills at practice but to bring that out onto the field a game day is a whole different level and it it seems like that's one of the things that Jalen's best at Um, when you talk about the senior season he didn't have as many uh, interceptions uh, I mean sorry his junior season in college he didn't have as many interceptions that year but he led the league in pass breakups you're mentioning he did that I think you said for rookies that first year yeah. but his junior season he did it too pass was defended he let he was in the top for Pac-12 during that and that's just something that you consistently see from Jalen um and so that year he obviously you mentioned he kind of already had that plan going into college that he wanted to be able to play be able to get his degree in that two and a half years and be able to move on to the NFL. So do you think it was a pretty easy decision after that junior year to enter the draft for him? Um, Easy decision. I say, I think it was. Um, I just hate that we got the whole thing, um, whole thing with um, with COVID, whole thing with COVID. But I think it was easy at the end of the day, just because at that time it's nothing else that you have have to show for. It's not nothing else you have to prove. The only other option that was on the table, which uh, maybe now with the NIL, maybe much more of a likely option, but to transfer to maybe your your SEC at Alabama, uh, Ohio State, a mm-hmm. team that I would say a team that re- receives a lot of hype, a lot of love in order to j- just to be to 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 be be be, be, to, to be, to, 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 to be, be picked higher. Um, I know he had the shoulder injury, but but if you yeah. look at the body of work, if you take the same stats, same accolades, same everything, and you put him on an Ohio State. You put him on Alabama. You put him on a team like that. I I don't think he's picked number what fifty two. Fifty, yeah. You know what I'm saying. So it wasn't never what he wasn't able to do. It's just some athletes, some teams, some schools have a lot more hype. And if yeah. you look at it, the corners drafted in the second, third round. For from that draft, their 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 careers have been a lot more successful and successful than the ones who were picked in the first 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 round. Yeah, we're seeing. I mean, we see it every year where we go through and we mock all of these guys when they're going to be drafted, and then a year later we're going back and doing redrafts and right. saying where <laughs> should certain people have been picked. Right. Personally, very glad Jalen came to Chicago in that second Absolutely. round. Absolutely. But 
<laughs> when you are so like for him i mentioned earlier obviously we were just talking about the bears drafted him in the second round it, it seems i don't know i've never been to i've actually never been to california um fresno's no, northern to, california to, 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 to go i know i gotta get out there um but uh, fresno's northern california it it gets pretty cold there during winter times um uh, cold compared to chicago no now <laughs> Okay. Because I was just cold. thinking of his process of where I was like, okay, Fresno, I think it's pretty cold. I know Utah gets cold, and obviously yeah. Chicago gets cold. So he's kind of been on this path of just playing cold weather football. Do you think at all that he was kind of hoping he would get sent to a warmer climate team when he was getting drafted? Um, hoping. I mean, I could probably say yeah, but the cold, obviously, having the. Have having the, um, the Utah time. I was like, all right, I'm in Chicago. Yeah, I don't know how much colder it will be be out there, but yeah, I mean, it's fine. So one of the things, last one, last couple for you, Johnny. Before I let you go, one of the things sure. that I think has been probably the only knock of Jalen since he's been in the NFL has people been talking about his interceptions. They wanted yeah. to see more interceptions. Obviously, that's happening this year. He has four interceptions. Um, this this year and after having won in the hit the previous years in the NFL what and I know like you being around him and you talking to him and you also being a defensive back when that is something that you need to improve on what is it that you and that Jalen was really working on this last offseason to just hit that next level of what he knew was the final kind of touch yeah. of what he needed to do that little last box checked Right. Uh, for him in the NFL career, and uh, what exactly was he working on this summer to get to that next level for that? Um, I can say we were th th throwing the ball more and things like that, but it's it's honestly not something you can you can practice for. Um, yes, you can try to practice on the hands aspect and throwing the football, but. Every every athlete who's in the NFL, if you throw them the ball and they know the ball is being thrown, everybody can yeah. catch the ball. Yeah. I think I'm like I the, can catch the ball. I'm just yeah. not saying I could get an interception. Right, <laughs> right, right. You, and so I think though when you look at it, you have to remember um, the ball's not being thrown to the defensive back. Yeah. Um, so you so oftentimes you don't. See See the ball first, so you're a hep, hep, hep or too late finding the ball. Then you're trying to fight the receiver for the ball. So not only are you trying not to let him make the catch, you're trying to catch it too. So th there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. at lay there that make it that that don't make it easy to um to catch um to catch to catch the ball. I know if you look at the past two, 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 two seasons, the guy um the guys who have been the interception leaders, their ex receivers. Okay. So when you have that history of locating the football, making hard receptions, diving for stuff. You you have to be an acrobat um, a lot of times to make an interceptions unless you have the times where the QB just th th rolls the ball at you, which hasn't happened a lot in my brother's time. It happened very few times as opposed to some other guys in the league, whether the it's an inaccurate pass. The ball is hit, hit off of somebody's helmet. Uh -huh. So to answer you, what did we do? We did, didn't really do anything as far as the offseason training. We always work on the hands and throwing the ball. I can, 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 can say there was maybe a, a attitude change in terms of going for interceptions at certain times. Yeah. But with that being said, though, I don't like to teach that because what happens if you don't go for, for the interception? Oh, no, I'm sorry. What happens if you go for the interception, you don't make it, and the receiver runs up the side. That's the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, then it's a, yeah. Then you're you talking about the corner so, getting burned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, it looks good when you make the interception. Yeah. But how about when I don't? So, yeah, because there's. Being held, 
held up a Google good game you. Well, yeah, he, he had five interceptions, but he also allowed 687 yards and he go, 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 got beat yeah. times. So you have to find the fine. You have to find the fine line in there, you know? So yeah. what, what I think he has been able to, which he has been able to, um, been able to find that, that fine line. But all in all, there wasn't a lot that we changed as far as off-season training. It was okay. only the, the attitude as to far as certain times when, when you can go for an interception and when to, to be safer. Yeah, I, I Johnny, look, I'm, I've been, like I said, very pro Jalen. And last year there was even periods of times when people were complaining about And when I say people, I mean, like, a small group of people on Twitter who are just like, why doesn't he have more interceptions? And I'm like, the dude, there was a a, a stretch of four or five games last year where they said he wasn't targeted one time. And I was like, there's a reason they don't want to throw towards Jalen. how do you get interceptions? (laughs) I was like, you can't get the interception if the ball's not coming towards you. And that's one thing. And then this year, there was a couple times where, and I know he wanted it. You can see it after his reaction after the play. A couple of potential that would have ended up possibly being a pick six or two at certain times that they would have gotten in his hands and he would have caught it. But my defense on that is like you just said, at, at, he's playing the ball at that time. And the, the best thing you can look at at that point is it wasn't a catch. So it's like he right. did his job. The guy, the receiver didn't catch the ball and he's going in. Jalen is our number one. So he's going against the best of the receivers on every single team that we're playing. And so he has the toughest competition out there on the field. And yeah. we're talking about this year and do you watch do you watch all the Bears games, I'm guessing? Yeah. Okay. So obviously the, the defense this last eight weeks has just looked phenomenal. And you feel like at every level they're starting to get better. And it's been really fun for me to watch the defensive back group in general because I think when you look at them and adding Tyreek Steven this uh, Stevenson this year and being able to put him on the outside and move Kyler to that nickel corner spot, I just feel like placed everybody exactly where they needed to be. And I do think that probably helped Jalen too in certain things because he can do what he does best and not have to worry about the entirety of the field, which I feel like he's had to do previous years. Is that something you've noticed? Um, Honestly, I would say no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you, you're <laughs> inaccurate or, um, or not. But I just, whatever half of the field, side of the field, I, what me and Jalen talk about, focus on, is at the end of the day, how, how do we eliminate who's ever in his face? You know, yeah. That number two, tight end, who's ever in our face, we want to eliminate him each advantage. Um, each and every down, and that's through playing with an aggressive attitude, and then I'm executing your technique at the end of the day, um, because that's all he can control to roll. But what I am able to say, I see from the defense as a whole, is they're starting to attack. They're starting to, uh, to, to attack a lot more, bringing five men, bringing six people. Uh-huh. And that, I mean, I know I'm not anybody like big and bad, but that's what I like. I like when yeah. we have an attacking defense at the end of the day that makes the offense have to adjust off of us. Um, yeah. and I think Chicago has the personnel to be, be able to. I mean, you have a to, to talk to Reek Stevenson, who's come on these past couple of games, and then you got Jalen on the opposite side, who can who who can can eliminate the other teams. The, 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 the number one option. Now, how they choose to execute all that, that's not on me. I'm not yeah. being prepared, but they for sure have the talent out there. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the upfront is a big difference for me because I think last year, the way that the way there was no pressure on quarterbacks, the way that you said there there was no, you felt like not a whole lot of attack whatsoever in general of just 
not a good run defense. So I feel like at, there were certain points last year where teams kind of felt like they could do whatever. And it was putting a lot of pressure on the defensive backs because up front wasn't doing much. And then now it almost seems like, granted, guys like this is me going on my rant about the Bears, but guys like Javon Dexter's getting more comfortable. This game's slowing down for him. Montez Sweat, obviously, absolute beast of a human up there out front. And so everything's kind of falling into place now, which I do think helps the surroundings. But I do think we've seen Jalen just play at this whole other level this year, and it's been really fun to watch. And I know it is probably for you watching games because if I'm sitting here, don't even know the guy, and I'm cheering the way I'm cheering. I know you're out there going crazy. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for hopping on with me. I really appreciate it. Again, like I said, we're big Jalen fans here, and we hope to see him again. But at the end of the day, I hope to see what's best for Jalen Johnson um, because – He's a great guy. He's been such a such a fun person to watch develop and grow and learn on the Chicago Bears. And I really appreciate you telling us this story a little bit. Thank you. No problem. Very much appreciate you for having me. Yep. Thank you. And good luck with everything. And I'm sure we'll chat a little bit a little later. That sounds good. All, All right. right. Bye. Thanks.